I got to go youth of today. I, I'm going to go, um, expe- it's not strange, but it's strange. Expectations changed. The worm turned for me with that one. Uh, Flame still burns just because, and you know, there's there's lines in strange bands like, you know, uh, I don't have to prove it to anybody because I already proved it to myself. Mm-hmm. Things like that just, that just, that's empowering. Um, and uh, anything off, any any judge, any judge song, New York Crew is one of my, that's like my life's blood, you know, so those, those that kind of stuff. First hardcore show I ever saw was an accident. I went to CB's and I saw a band called Wolf and Cookies at night. I don't really think it was a hardcore show, but it was a punk show. And I was under the impression that if you went to CB's, there was 24-hour slam dancing and it was always on. And we got there and there's tables set up and there's just shitty, well, I don't want to say shitty in case there's still a band. But... Um, we got drunk and threw up in the basement. They were letting us drink at like 15 or 16 years old, and, and it was a mess. But real, I think the real first uh, one was AF and Youth of Today at CB's. God, I don't want to say John Watson, but I got to say John Watson. Uh, or, you know what I'm, I'm going to say? I'm going to give, I'm gonna give uh, not in the pit, but on stage, Ray Capo. Favorite dancer on stage, great best stage diver, raker of faces, make you pay for being up front. Ray, Ray Capo, favorite dancer. I would do anything to go back in time and um, see a minor threat show. Minor threat to me was that would any minor, minor threat in New York. That would have been bananas. I was lucky enough to see the Bad Brains in '86 and Chrome Mags in '86, so that I didn't miss too too much. But uh, A7 shows, uh, I fucking you know, it would have been cool. CBs. Um, I think I still call it the Ritz, but that you could still play shows there. Um, where there was a resurgence in shows at the Ritz, that was kind of fantastic for me because I definitely saw some amazing shows there, from like the Stray Cats to, you know, the Chromax. Mm-hmm. So that was good. And people, people, uh, I think don't realize that when CB's uh, banned us for a few summers, that um, fucking Pyramid Club had some great Pyramid Club had great shows. It still does shows, I guess, but. There was a summer man where the Christians were across the street handing out free free food, and there's fucking soft. We'd play softball in the park, and uh, it was good. I would have to say uh, when Age of Quarrel came out, um, 80, 86, the uh, Chromags um, at the Ritz. It was it was the most powerful one of the most powerful things I've ever ever you know like when you're at a show and and there's there's you know stage diving and reverse stage diving and there's a pit at that show you had to dance there was no question because the entire club was moving where the floor was undulating where I was like we're gonna fucking die like this floor is gonna collapse and we're we're all gonna be in the basement together and at that show uh, John Joseph um, validated everything. He said, uh, yo, this song goes out to the straight edge because they know what's up. And it was just like, yes, we're not pussies. John Joseph just said, we know what's up. I don't know what that means exactly, but we are okay. High five, everybody. Well, I was, re- I was reared with the idea that the top three drummers in New York City were Petey Hines, Ernie Parada, and Mackie. That's how I, that's how I came up. Um, Mackie, yes, still is there. I hate to give it to him. I love playing with Sammy. He's a, he breaks my balls, and, uh, and we have a love-hate relationship of trying to get each other's goat, but Sammy is a fucking sick drummer. And... Um, I, I gotta say I love I even I love watching Armand play because it's just like a, some sort of like I don't know robotic animal 
and and it's like a biomech <laughs> mashup of of a human cyborg, and he just cr crushes it, and he's like a machine. So I do I do love watching Armand too. I'll give I'll give you a few. Um, Craig Satari, <laughs> high concepts. Um, who else? I think Walter's pretty fucking funny too, in like a and like a different. And we got to get him going kind of way. Walter's a good uh, like straight man to to have go back and forth with. Um, Capo's pretty funny. Jimmy Gestapo's pretty funny. But I'll give you a quick uh, Craig Satari one that I just got the other day. Uh, I'll give you a couple of Craigisms to so the so the people can understand. Kid, kid, that, that kid looks like he could drink a lot of warm milk in a hot cafeteria. <laughs> and and when you looked at the kid, you went, yeah. But the other day he gave me one and he said, he was talking about a mutual friend and he said he doesn't understand that hardcore is like all the tentacles of the octopus lead back to the octopus's meat. <laughs> and I went. Yeah, that's, he doesn't understand that. The tentacles lead back to the meat. You're right. And he's like, you know what I'm saying. And I'm like, I do. I lived in a squat. Sh I played and slept in many pissy beds and bed bugs and all that. But I actually, I don't know if it constitutes live. Three weeks in Amsterdam. I, uh, I didn't want to change my ticket. And I was living in a squat. And everybody bounced to different parts of Europe, and some people came home. And I just sat and like had a journal, and I would like uh, they had a bidet upstairs. You had to climb through like a ladder through a hole to the second floor, and there was a bidet that worked. So I, that was the sink. <laughs> and I, it wasn't the same squat, but we went. I stayed in a squat one time where there was electric hooked up for the hot water heater. It was a cast iron tub, so you, they were like, you can shower, but there's a mild electric shock the entire time. Piss, yeah, piss bottles, fucking, oh, I've spent a lot of time in squats. If you're going to get into the hardcore scene, it's a long haul. You got you to gotta be ready. I'm looking you in the eye right now, youth. Don't take this lighthearted. Don't fuck up. Work hard. And... Bring something to the table. Don't just be a fucking caboose. Be an engine. Be a catalyst. And uh, you'll have a great life.